All right, evening, everyone. So yeah, let's see. Let's go ahead and talk about Ganoderma. Um, we've got a bunch of different types of reishis around, uh, well, around the world and around our area. So this is going to be a short presentation about uh, the Ganoderma genus in general and some of our mid-Atlantic species that are represented here. Um, yeah, and I'm Jared Urchak, second VP of uh, MAW, also an acupuncturist and herbalist in College Park and uh, lead nature walks and grow my own mushrooms and have a bunch of experience growing the reishis too. So a lot of the photos you'll see in this slide are from um, what I have either, you know, grown or collected myself. In terms of the history of this genus, it used to be, um, well, it's a genus of wood decay fungi in the order of uh, polyporals and the Ganodermataceae family. Uh, originally reishi, the classic reishi mushroom was called Boletus lucidus because, you know, most of the mushrooms with any kind of pores or, you know, any kind of polypore mushroom was in the Boletus genus. Uh, that was shifted in 1821 to Polyporus lucidus. And I wanted to say that also because, you know, we, we sort of have a curmudgeonly attitude sometimes about shifting names around uh, because of the genetic work and the DNA analysis. And so we're always moving, you know, different species around and giving them different names. But, you know, this has been happening since the 1800s and earlier as well. So it's always fun to, to get that history there. In 1881, the Ganoderma genus was created and only contained, you know, the type species reishi, which we'll see um, here real soon, Ganoderma lucidum. Uh, shortly after, about 40 species were included. And nowadays, there's about 80 species of Ganoderma around the world. Ganoderma lucidum, the, the classic reishi, is uh, now we know it to really only be native to Europe. So we used to call a lot of the, the classic reishi looking species that grew around the United States, Ganoderma lucidum. Um, but, uh, you know, that's more of just lumper mentality saying, uh, you know, that it kind of looks like that reishi, so we'll give it that same name. But now we know they're, they're quite differently related. And a lot of this talk is also based on a study or a research paper that came out by um, Matt Schink and a few other people, and that study is cited at the end of this as well. So a lot of the information in this talk comes from, from this research article called Elucidating Lucidum, uh, which came out recently. And again, that's, that's cited at the end of this talk here, so you can see that. Um, and the Ganoderma genus is really broken down into two separate uh, categories, basically, what we call lacate Ganoderma and non lacate. So the lacate Ganoderma produced this shiny lacquer like <coughs> material on the cap and often on the stem as well. Um, and the non lacate, of course, uh, don't produce that same kind of shiny lacquer. So we're going to see some good photos of that coming up. Uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean here. And we'll start off by talking about the lacate species. Um, I want to briefly just go through and mention there's a bunch of different lacate species that grow around the United States that we'll uh, just touch on here before getting into the, the local ones. There's Ganoderma curtsii. And notice too that most of this grows on oak. Uh, there's a few species that grow on some conifers and other hardwoods, but most of, uh, most of the reishis and the Ganodermas that we know of um, really like oak trees. So we've got Ganoderma curtsii. Uh, we do have Ganoderma lucidum that grows uh, here. There are only uh, a couple of reported areas in, I think, the Pacific Northwest and also in Utah, oddly enough. Um, we also have Ganoderma martin, martinense in Florida and kind of the southern area. We've got a different species of Ganoderma curtisii uh, variety, Meridithiae, that grows on the roots of pine trees, I, I believe, also down south. Uh, Ganoderma oregonensis grows on white fir in California, and then Polychronum. We've got a few other species, Ravenelii. Um, Ganoderma sessile is another common one that we'll talk about that grows around here. I don't have a slide on Ganoderma tsuge, but that grows on hemlocks all through the, the mid-Atlantic and up into, um, you know, up into the, the northeast as well. Ganoderma tuberculosum is another, and then there's a handful of other species that grow uh, 
in, in environments quite different than ours. So as far as our local lacate species, one of the common ones that you're going to see around is uh, Ganoderma sessile. We also have Ganoderma cartesii and Ganoderma tsuge, as I mentioned. And this is each one of those in order. So Ganoderma sessile um, often doesn't have a stem, as we'll talk about, whereas Ganoderma cartesii and tsuge do have a stipe or a stem-like structure on them. Ganoderma sessile in particular, so sessile, the meaning of that word is that it adheres close to the surface, right? That's kind of the, the Latin breakdown there. And it's really, it really sort of tracks. Anytime you're gonna see Ganoderma sessile, you're gonna see it basically growing right off of the ground as you, it's kind of hard to see in the center picture, but you're either gonna see it growing off of a tree with no stem, or you're gonna see it growing straight off of the ground, almost level with the you know, with the grass or with the floor that it's growing on. Um, so it never really has a stipe whatsoever, uh, although it does kind of lift itself off of the ground just a little bit. One of the other things you're gonna see with Ganoderma sessile is that there's kind of this corrugated quality to it. Uh, if you can see, if you can look at the cap, there's this kind of wavy quality where it sort of undulates a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see that clearly from the photos. Um, this one here in the middle as well, there's these kind of deeper folds that come into it and it's not really um, smooth as we'll see with Ganoderma curtisii uh, in, in one of the next slides here. Another tell that you have, uh, you know, if you find a reishi out in the wilds or in the city, so to speak, because Ganoderma sessile really likes city environments. It likes growing on city trees and anytime they dig up, um, dig up a tree and sort of shred the root ball, you know, so they kind of uh, grind the grind of the stump, you'll often see Ganoderma sessile popping up afterwards. And one of the other things you'll notice about this, and, and it's a, a good tell that you have Ganoderma sessile, is that the coloration of this Ganoderma is there, there's a really deep brownish red and a deep brownish yellow that comes into this mushroom. Um, so, you know, it can get this really beautiful shiny red color, but there's always this kind of like more brown subtext to the color of Ganoderma sessile. And of course, you know, they all have, um, they'll all have this nice white lip that's growing, that's kind of the growing edge of the mushroom. So you'll see that in all of the, the reishis that we have coming up here. So another local lacate species we have is Ganoderma curtisii. And this is the one that most people, you know, call Ganoderma lucidum um, uh, back in the day. And people still refer to it as Ganoderma lucidum, even though it's not, it's not really accurate anymore. Uh, curtisii is named from the mycologist Curtis, uh, and that was the, the name change uh, once we realized that this was not identical to the European species Ganoderma lucidum. Uh, that name was changed to Curtisii. Uh, so with Curtisii, a couple of the things you'll notice that is different about that is that it really does have a stipe. It very much has a stem. And we'll see that in, in one of the coming pictures here. Uh, but Ganoderma Curtisii definitely has a stipe in the right environment. Now you'll see here in this center picture and also the one on the right, there really isn't a stem because it's coming right off of the tree. Right? There's no need for it to have a stem because it's already elevated into the environment. It doesn't really need a stem to, to sort of elevate it further. Um, so just because you see a reishi that doesn't have a stem doesn't mean that it's Ganoderma sessile, but uh, you know, depending on the growing environment, that is an indicator that it is sessile. That being said, one of the other things you'll notice about Curtisii and, and one of the things you'll be able to, to one of the things that will let you know you have Ganoderma curtisii versus sessile is again that it's more smooth than sessile. It has less of that corrugation. And you see that especially here on the right. Uh, there's a very, very smooth, clear disc uh, that this, the, the conch of this mushroom uh, takes the shape of this really smooth, clear disc. And it's very different than that kind of corrugated, wobbly, wavy quality that Ganoderma sessile has. And the coloration is also often very different. Ganoderma curtisii has a really wide range of colors. It's really interesting. 
you'll see it as this really typical red reishi color often, you know, with the red stipe and kind of a yellowish red cap with that nice white growing edge. And a lot of times when you see this, this one also likes to frequent um, dead stumps and uh, when people grind stumps out of their yard, you'll see Ganoderma curtisii popping up a lot. And when you see Ganoderma curtisii growing in a really bright sunlit environment, you know, where it's not very shady, you'll see it take on this really bright yellow color. And it actually won't have any of that shiny lacquer. The sun will kind of, uh, it almost seems like the sun kind of burns that off or prevents it from getting that lacquered shiny quality. Uh, and then when you find it growing in the woods, which uh, you'll see, uh, these ones here on the on the right side, you'll see that it really does get that typical lacate um, shiny characteristic that the uh, that red reishis are known for. That reishi is really known for. One of the other things that you'll see color wise when it's growing in the woods or when it's growing in a more shaded environment is this picture here on the left. And this is not my photo. It's from this website here um, from uh, a page that references a lot of Texas fungi. Anyways, what you'll notice is when it's growing in a really shaded environment, it gets this really almost dusty, dark purple color to the, to the mushroom. And you'll see this on the stem, and you'll also see this on the cap, as you see here in this photo. And it's really, really beautiful. I mean, it really brings up this kind of etheric feeling when you're seeing that type of reishi with that, um, that really bright, shiny purple color coming off of it. So Ganoderma curtisii can really have quite a range of colors, and the, that is also a really good indicator that you have curtisii versus sessile, is uh, some of these purples and brighter yellow colors that come off of the curtisii. Oh yeah, and one thing you also notice, you can see here, um, this is a code for the, some of the mycoflora work that we were doing. Um, you can see that I was able to actually etch some letters onto the pore surface of this mushroom here, because uh, that's a really common quality of reishi mushrooms that you can uh, bruise the the pore surface really easily so you can you know write messages you can draw pictures you can have all kinds of fun you can even just notice that your thumbprint will stain that pore really easily and here we also have some photos of ganoderma curtisii just to show you how the stipe or that stem can really come off of uh, come off of the cap there so again, you're never going to see Ganoderma sessile with this really clear stipe, unless it's growing in a really weird environment, which I will show you actually. <laughs> um, and again, just this picture to reference how different it can be when it's growing in the bright sunlight and it has this matte yellow color versus when it's growing in the shade. Uh, and this is a, a, a specimen that somebody actually anchored to a coconut shell. <laughs> Um, but you can see how there's this really, really dark red and this really extremely shiny quality that comes to the stem as well as the cap surface. So yeah, a lot of different color variation with Ganoderma curtisii. Uh, as far as a couple of the non-lacate species we have around here, I wanted to talk about two briefly, one of them being Ganoderma aplanatum, which is the common uh, artist conch it's also known as the uh, ancient reishi because it's actually perennial. It'll continue to grow from the same cap surface and it will continue to expand that for years and years and years. So you can find an old one of these and slice it down the center and you can sometimes count three, four, five. I've counted as uh, many as 10 growth rings on Ganoderma aplanatum before. But you can really notice that the cap surface is, uh, uh, it does not have that shiny color at all. Ganoderma aplanatum will always be uh, some variation of this kind of ivory, uh, ivory, tawny brown color. And it will never get that fully shiny lacquered quality that the red reishis will. And Ganoderma uh, aplanatum, you can see these uh, in some parts of the country, these can grow huge. I've seen them a couple of feet across and there's reports of them even bigger. Around here, you'll, you really won't ever see one more than a foot across. That's going to be a pretty big one. And you can often find really teeny little ones uh, growing off of oak trees. Jared, the, you're need, Jared, you're going to need to kind of wind this up pretty soon, please. Oh, yeah, sure. That was about, yep, yeah, perfect.
Great. So uh, Ganoderma lobatum is really similar to Aplanatum, but what it'll do is it'll form these lobes. So instead of continuing to grow out in a plane-like surface, it'll start to grow down. So the upper cap will kind of die off and it'll grow further down as a lobe coming off of the conch, therefore the name lobatum. Uh, so yeah, that's just a brief overview of some of the species we have around here uh, that you'll definitely notice on forays. You'll definitely notice when people bring them into meetings and you know, you'll see these out in the woods yourself. A um, couple of pictures here of how the spores are released. The spores can really uh, come out on these really dense things. You often find the spores kind of coating the top of the mushroom um, or coating the entire surface of the log or the plants nearby it, which is pretty amazing to see when Aplanatum, Ganoderma Aplanatum will do this pretty regularly as well. Um, and then I just have some kind of wild pictures of some reishi that will grow uh, all kinds of different variations on the cap when you manipulate the CO2 uh, content. And these are pictures from Ryan Gates of terrestrial fungi. He has cultures of this for sale as well as um, some of these different art projects that he uh, works on. All right, so I think I'll just leave it here with a couple of lookalikes. We do have a crack cap polypore that grows on locusts, and we also have red belted polypore that will grow a little bit more up in the mountains, but can get a little bit of that shiny red quality. And these are both lookalikes that aren't in the Ganoderma, but, um, but you see them around. So, anyways, yeah, good luck getting out there and finding some Ganoderma. That, uh,